The Democratic Republic of the Congo is a country right in the heart of Africa. It used to be known uh, by the name of Zaire. It's as big as the United States, east of the Mississippi. Huge country, about 80 million people. It was ruled for 32 years by a dictator named Mobutu Sese Seko. He was overthrown violently in 1997 by a rebel leader named Laurent Kabila. Laurent Kabila was assassinated in 2001 and his son, Joseph Kabila, took office. Joseph Kabila continues to be president of the Congo. Despite this history of violence, dictatorship, and bloody assassinations, uh, this has been a period that has been marked by a move towards democracy. It's that which is at risk right now. President Kabila uh, decided many, many years ago to extend his term in office. This is not something that he hit upon in the last few weeks or months. It's been clear to those of us following the Congo closely that for approximately three years he's embarked on this strategy. Given how dedicated he is to staying in office, it's hard to imagine that he's going to give it up easily. If an agreement is not reached before December 19th and we have a large outbreak of violence around the country. No one knows what could happen. No one knows what different elements in the police and military could do over time. There are still armed militias, particularly in the eastern part of the country. No one knows what they would do. Um, one can start creating all sorts of very, very scary scenarios for what might happen after December 19th uh, if there isn't a greater effort for a more inclusive agreement and for much greater respect for the actual Congolese constitution. The problem in the Congo is that uh, there have been terrible wars in this country for the last 20 years. The country is largely peaceful now, but not entirely so. And any increased instability, certainly if it would lead back to war, that impacts civilians more than anybody else. These have been wars that have not involved so much sol soldiers killing one another, but soldiers preying on civilians. Everyone is terrified of a return to that in the Congo. Women and girls have been among those who have suffered the most. Uh, of course, Congo has been called the rape capital of the world. There are horrific stories of sexual violence committed against very, very young girl babies even. While incidents of the worst kind of violence against girls and women have gone down, they have not stopped. They went down because of uh, a decrease in violence and an increase in stability. They did not go down because of any greater efforts, really, on the part of the government to start to install the necessary state systems of justice. There have been some uh, Band-Aid efforts to do so, but nothing systematic. Uh, so the system remains extremely fragile and it could break. And if it breaks, we have seen the tragic outcomes, particularly against girls and women. One area where Congolese society still needs to move forward dramatically is to involve the many impressive, well-educated uh, women who one sees in Congolese civil society. There are very few Congolese women in the government or in leadership roles across Congolese society. I was in the Congo from late 2001 to mid-2004 running the USAID mission. It was an extraordinarily exciting time in the Congo because when I arrived, the war looked to be ending, but it had not quite ended. The country was still divided, there were still rebel groups standing up and active. But in 2002, uh, a peace agreement was reached so that in mid-2003, a government of national transition came to the capital city and I was there when rebel groups actually came into the capital city and uh, took up residence. So to see what the Congolese could do with a lot of help from the international community, but this was a Congolese agreement, to come together uh, and work for a transition, which then after I left in 2004, led to successful elections, and I came back to observe them for the Carter Center in 2006. It was a period of tremendous excitement and optimism, 
And so many of us don't want to see that lost now. We fear that we're this far away from losing that now if President Kabila is permitted to violate the Constitution.